Hi, it's been a while. Uh, my name's Scratch, and I'm a dumbass. My name's Jim, but Scratch will do. All right, so why I'm a dumbass will become evident as uh, this goes along. This first part of the clip, though, when I head out, I said, hey, a-holes, it's your fault I'm on this motorcycle and not doing all the chores I'm supposed to be doing today because you've been posting all your stinking videos about all the stinking stuff you're doing on your bike, and now I'm forced to do this. And I'm, I'm doing this strictly for litigation purposes, saying what I'm saying now, in case I should be taken to court for not doing what I said I was going to do. You a-holes. Okay, thank you. That's, that's how we start. Now I had to stop because I had some kind of weird thing going on. It said night lapse on my camera, and indeed my camera was not filming. So I got that straightened out and then uh, proceeding along the way, which I was in downtown Fort Walton Beach by this point. And I thought, you know what, let's uh, cut the camera back on because that was my, my idea was I'm just going to cut it on and off when there's something of interest and take you across the Brooks Bridge in downtown Fort Walton Beach on our way to Okaloosa Island, which is where our actual beaches are. And uh, to the right of me and to the left of me are, are the sound, parts of the sound. And the water you will see due south dead ahead of me as I'm crossing the bridge, or maybe you won't see it, hell if I know, is the Gulf of Mexico. Thank you very much. It's also on Okaloosa Island where my son Jack works at a place called the Dock of the, 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 Dock of the Bay. See, there's Herbie the Love Bug. That's how you know if you're on Highway 98 on Okaloosa Island, Fort Walton Beach, and you see Herbie the Love Bug, turn in there. Uh, there's a great restaurant, the the dot, the, whatever it's called, right there. And then my son rents, um, he rents pontoon boats and jet skis back there. And I'm looking for Jack. And I actually can see Jack. He is, I mean, you can't see, but there's a bleep ton of people out here running boats. I'm waving at Jack, he never sees me. But, um, if you would ever like to, I'm going to cough now. <coughs> really professional, but I don't want to stop tape. So if you're ever looking to do any kind of rental stuff, that's where, where you go do it. And I realize Jack is never going to see me. So at this point, I decided to pull off and, and maybe come back there on my way back through. And then I realized, no, wait, I was going to go north and go uh, Niceville way home and take you that way. And then I thought, why am I even having this conversation with you people? You people don't rule me. So now I'm just tap dancing until I pull off, which I'm doing now. So I decided to, to head on down the road and think, I'll check with Jack when I come back through this way, which was a nice thought. I did check on him. He wasn't there. At this point, we're heading across Okaloosa Island, and that's the bay on the left, and you can't see the gulf on the right. But it's just such an amazingly gorgeous day. It is beautiful outside. And uh, I was just being really thankful. I was really thankful. I mean, we live in such a great place. Um, I don't want you to know how great it is, but I also want to brag on it. it, it it's an amazingly beautiful place. And, and there are signs that business is starting to pick up and tourists are starting to show back up. And we'll get into all the safety stuff later. And, and, and I, I definitely have something I want to say about our, our current situation. But I'm going to do that later. Right here, I'm just enjoying the beauty of it. I, although I should have put a, uh, a U, an ND filter on there since I'm riding into the sun. So that wasn't the smartest thing ever. Okay, now we're in the city of Destin. We're coming into the city of Destin, crossing the Destin Bridge. To the left is a place we call Crab Island. More on that later. Those are the dredges on the right that they used to to uh, dredge out the Destin Harbor and the entry into the harbor and the uh, outlet through the jetties so the boats can get out into the Gulf of Mexico. But it's just a gorgeous view. And the big building on your right is called uh, Harborwalk Village. And we used to have, my radio station used to have its control room there. So it was a great view, but it was a horrible, it was a horrible unit to have a, a radio station in. The rooms were way too small. There was too much echo. It was horrible. But it was a beautiful place to come to work every day. And uh, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. But we ended up being bought out by another company who bought a building in Fort Walton, which is also a nice building. You just can't see the water. So anyway, Harbor Walk Village, a lot of restaurants and bars and a variety of things. Uh, Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville is there at Harbor Walk Village. More on that a little bit later. But uh, that's a pretty cool place. So I'm just kind of giving you a, a little tour of Destin is what I decide I'll do. So now I'm going down by the docks 
and I'm looking for, um, well, there's a little local place down there. Uh, what am I thinking? What's the name of it? It's got a name. I know the name. I just passed the Red Door Saloon, by the way. That, oh, the Boathouse. The Boathouse Oyster Bar is a great place, right? Um, it's a, a lot of locals go there. A lot of tourists go there. It's very rustic. There are bras hanging from the ceiling and everything, but great oysters and all that jazz. And as I'm making my way down this hill past the, the Red Bar that I or the Red Door Saloon that I mentioned. I see this building over to the left of that truck, the taller building. I've never seen that before. I don't even know where it came from, so now I'm curious. I'm gonna go through and again, I glance back to the right to the to the boathouse. And uh, I come across this building that's for lease. And I found out later from talking to Pillion, who until she had to quit work, was uh, work for the Destin Chamber of Commerce, that that was, I guess, kind of like a spec an investor had that restaurant built with plans to lease and then the COVID hit and everything else. And at this point I'm thinking, okay, I guess I'll go back the way I came, but wait, let's go over there. And, well, what should I do? And then I realized, oh hell, I'm on a motorcycle. So I can just, and I did. Okay. Now coming up in just a second, I'm going to realize there's a boat, a fishing boat over there. And I can go, wait a minute. So I back up here, and the fishing boat that I spied is a boat I've gone out on a couple of times over the years. I was very fortunate to be a guest of someone else, because it is a little spendy, but if you're big into open water fishing, the Big John is the boat for you to charter. Uh, the last time I went out, which has been a number of years ago, he's like a grouper whisperer. He'll put you on snapper, he'll put you on anything you want, snapper, amberjack, grouper. But uh, Captain Todd is his name. It's the Big John, Captain Todd Allen, 850-685-2263. Now quickly, I want to tell you a story about the last time I went out when I caught my 50-pound grouper. I think they're called silver bellies. And uh, one of the other guys caught a 53-pounder. He's kind of like the soup Nazi on, on Seinfeld. This is how it works. He, he takes you to a place. He toots his horn, you drop your line. He toots your horn twice, you bring up your line. First, he takes you to a place, you know, where that has some fish, nothing really big, but where he knows he can get you on fish. And the trick to grouper is they like to hang around around rubble. So when they bite your line, you have to reel fast. You got to reel really hard and really fast to pull them up out of the rubble before they yank you down there and break you off. Well, if you can, some of these intermediate places he takes, if he sees you can handle it on the smaller grouper, then he takes you out to those places where you can't run a GPS or anything else on your phone. And he puts you on some big ass fish. And uh, that's exactly what he did with us. And there were five of us, I think. I, I don't even know how much, how much uh, fish we brought back. But again, I caught that 50 pound grouper. Somebody else called a 53 pound grouper. And we had enough grouper and we had enough uh, snapper to eat on for quite a while. So just one more time, this is not a paid announcement, but I know some of you guys live to come to places like Destin to do some amazing fishing. And uh, it's the Big John, Captain Todd Allen, 850-685-2263. All right, so now we're in Destin and I'm gonna take you to Old 98. There's Highway 98, which is the main highway we're on. East-West Highway goes, you know, forever in both directions. Uh, but this used to be where the original part of 98 went. We're cutting straight down the beach road. And uh, Destin Lanes are on the right. It's where everybody goes, everybody goes to play. Uh, everybody goes bowling, and there's a rock club over there. So we're, now, we're heading into the more expensive area as we go down to Old 98. But it's also a beautiful area to ride. And... Uh, one of the things that I, I miss so much with, uh, and I know she does too, but uh, you know, Brianna's, Brianna's been going through a tough time. And although she did go to the Mayo Clinic and they did help her with her uh, central sensitization syndrome and the pain she was experiencing, her psoriatic arthritis is an ongoing battle. And uh, we have not been able to ride. She hasn't been able to ride with me and, and I miss it. I miss, I miss being able to go to brunch with her and I, I miss being able to we came down here and went to, uh, there's a little place called uh, uh, Badass Coffee that we went, and it was just the two of us, and it was just awesome. I mean, we didn't get to do stuff like that much. Um, so again, she did go, people ask all the time how she's doing. She's doing tremendously better in, in physical sense since Mayo and that she's off crutches. 
But being back home and, and still having central sensitization and she gets tired easily and the kids have been, like everybody else, kids have been out of school forever. And uh, she is their, their link to uh, distraction, meaning whenever they need something or think they want something, there's mom, there's mom, there's mom, there's mom. There's mom. I go to work, so I'm not much of a help in the uh, from mid morning on through six o'clock at night. So it's a lot on her, and uh, it, it's a constant battle. There's good days and there's bad days, and you people asking about her a lot means a tremendous amount. And uh, we thank you. She, she's she's the best person I've ever known. I, I miss the same her that I know she misses. That's what makes uh, this all so hard. But uh, she's hanging in there. She, she's hanging in there. She appreciates you asking. All right, now this part coming up, this is on Old 98. That used to go straight through here in a second. I just hit the mic. But a guy named Jay Odom wanted to build this big development on Old 98, and he wanted beachfront. Well, there really wasn't any room on the right because the beach and the water are right there. So what do you do? What's a developer to do? That was the question. I'm hitting the table. Shouldn't do that. That Jay Odom had. So he approached the city council in Destin and decided, hey, I'm going to take 98 and swing it back to the left a little bit so I can put a buttload of houses on the right and charge a fortune for waterfront housing and what I would guess would be called adjacent to waterfront housing. So all that housing on the right, that's all on land that was created by taking Highway 98 and jutting it back north inland for a little while. That's also the development on the left. But all that on the right is like adjacent beachfront and beachfront. And I have no idea what it cost him to pay the city of Destin for the politicians to allow him to do that. And at the time, it used to, it really pissed me off <laughs> when it happened initially. It was like within the first couple of years I was here. I got here in 93. So anyway, see how it swing you all the way around these houses, which are all now on the beach. And then as we come to the end here, it's, it's back to old 98 as it was. Well, kind of. So anyway, hey, if you can do it, I guess, you know, good on you. It wasn't illegal. All right, Badass Coffee right there on the left. The A-frame place, the yellow place, yellow A-frame, that was it. Badass Coffee. I've been there with uh, my buddy Jake. Of course, Brianna Pillion and I have been there uh, a couple times. Just love that little place. and I miss her. <laughs> I miss her a lot. This is another one of our little places coming up on uh, The Whale's Tale. The Whale's Tale is a restaurant and beach bar and uh, another one of our favorite places. And I, I get off the bike here and give you a little. It's the whale's tail. You're not gonna be able to see it, but down there there's a beach bar. I don't know, maybe we'll go down there and see if it's open. This is the Emerald Coast. You can see why they call it that. But what you don't know is we have the best sand on earth. Sugar white. Just to let you see, we got red flag flying today. That means uh, rough, rough, uh, don't hit my bike, sir. That means rough seas. We had double red flags yesterday, which meant the water was closed because we have really bad rip currents down here. People come to the Gulf Coast, especially this part of the Gulf Coast, and if they've ever been to the East Coast or anywhere else where they have big waves, they look at this and they think it's a freaking lake. Well, Rip currents suck you out, you fight against it, and then you get exhausted and then you drown. And every year there are several, sadly, because they don't watch the flags. Single red flag means warning. You can go into about knee deep maybe. Double red flags, you can't touch the water. Purple flags means usually jellyfish. It's some kind of sea life, but it's usually jellies. We don't get a lot of red tide around here. I was about to start filming. This woman pulls up in a van. It took her 20 effing minutes to put two umbrellas and a chair in it. All right. I'm, I'm out here chilling, having something to drink. Uh, so it's been, a, it's been a heck of a few months, and I forgot my... Um, my microphone so I apologize for that but it's been a heck of a few months what with Brianna's issues and 
kids being out of school and the COVID and everybody's been going through the same thing and so thankful to have a job, so thankful that I have been able to continue working, so thankful. And that's the, that's the thing I keep thinking about is with all the shit that's gone on, I'm just, I'm really thankful. I don't know what it would have done if my bosses hadn't kept us on the uh, payroll. I don't know what it would have done. And at the same time all this was going on, I've been trying to finish up schooling and get licensed as a home inspector so that I could start controlling my own destiny a little bit. I've told this story before, so just really quickly for anybody new, I'm 64 years old. I've been in radio for well, since I was 33. Before that, I just effed off. I did, I've been in roofing, I was in the nightclub business for a long time, I did sporting goods, blah, 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 I found radio. I've been married and divorced more than I even want to admit. Have not made the best money decisions. So at 64, I really don't have a retirement other than Social Security, which is not having a retirement. Recession helped with that. Not being smart with money early helped with that. Divorces help with that. So anyway, I needed something. For years, I thought I was going to, excuse me, for years, I thought I was going to open a restaurant. And, uh, but then I was approached a year ago about looking at becoming a home inspector and what all that means. So that's what I did. And uh, passed one course. It turned out to be the wrong course for the wrong test. I ended up taking the National Health, ins uh, Health Inspector home inspector's test and uh, thank you I appreciate that and uh, not the Florida home inspector test and the curriculum I had didn't didn't teach you the things that are on that test so I ended up getting the right curriculum for anybody who's wondering it's called InterNACHI is the name of the organization and through InterNACHI uh, I took yet another course and tested again last Monday and passed. So fingerprinted Friday, everything should get approved and I should have my license mid part of the week and my partner, who's already licensed, has started doing some home inspections. He works full time as well and uh, we both intend to keep our full time jobs so we can build this up. So it's been a long slog. But the one word I keep uh, coming back to is uh, I'm very thankful. And I'm also thankful to my family, most especially to Pillion and the kids, for putting up with my anxious, cranky, worried ass. All right, back on the bike. All right, so I quickly turned the camera back on here just to say two things that I meant to say when I was off the bike. The two things that COVID-19 have taught me. Number one is that I need to be way more self-sufficient. I need to be way more self-sufficient, which I've known kind of all my life, but I've never really, I've had opportunities to be uh, in business for myself in a variety of different things. And either they didn't work out or I ended up talking myself out of it. And that's why I'm so happy that I've now got the uh, business going for home inspections because it just gives me a little more control uh, uh, over it so uh, um, that's the one thing i wanted to say self-sufficiency is big and i don't just mean in in working i also mean in food i also mean i'm not talking about becoming a prepper or a nut i'm just talking about you know you need to be prepared you need to have that as we know in hurricane areas you know three days but maybe that three days should stretch into you know, two or three weeks, or maybe in a month's worth of uh, supplies, you know, like toilet paper or, or whatnot. Uh, the other thing that I learned, and I think we all learned, is, man, how soft have we gotten over time? Holy crap. You know, it, <laughs> we really haven't had to sacrifice much. Now, with that said, I got my butt kicked during the recession, and I know a lot of people had it a hundred times worse than me during the recession, and have a hundred times worse than me right now during the COVID-19. So I'm not for one second saying that you people are soft. I have definitely become soft, incredibly so. And uh, 
you know, a little adversity, um, it's you, you start. I'm not proud of it, but uh, you know, for a long time I thought, you know, why me? Why me? Well, I finally looked in the mirror one day and said, that's why. So uh, yeah, trying to toughen up a little, be a little more prepared for just everything in life, and pass that on to uh, to to Pillion and the kids and Jack and Sean and everyone that can. All right, this was going to be our last stop. We're heading into Destin. This is uh, Wyland, Wayland, Wheeland, J- Wy- I don't know. He's a famous artist. And uh, this is over by Destin Commons by uh, the Mid Bay Bridge. There's a big marina, Destin Marina there. And uh, this famous artist came here and painted this incredible mural on the side of this um, marina. And I'm telling you all about it, and then I realize you probably can't really see it because it's kind of small. And then it makes some kind of lame-ass joke about it being all done by paint by numbers. Isn't that hard to believe? And I tell you about the world's largest uh, American flag that is on top of that, which you can't see, and I don't have a drone Santa. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not able to show you that. But that's, uh, that's another thing right by the big shopping area, which is Destin Commons. This is uh, Lulu's. That's Jimmy Buffett's sister's restaurant. She's got a big chain. He's got a big chain. They're both overpriced for the food that you get. The food is not that good. Uh, but I will tell you that the, the view is amazing. <laughs> it's right on the sound. There's even a seaplane that uh, anchors out there. And it's a great ambiance. I mean, if you're going to go to the beach, I don't think people expect to go to the beach with your family and eat gourmet food. So you're not going to get gourmet food here, and you're going to pay a little more for it because you're paying for the view. But, uh, hey, it's a great place to go for drinks, too. And I head down this road to give you, kind of show you the backside of it. But then I realized, you know what, you can't see a damn thing over here. But, as you see, I did get on some dirt finally. So, I've got that going for me. So, now I decide I'm going to head out of here and go to my uh, last stop, which is Crab Island. All right. I'm steady on this wall. And, and that's a straight drop down there, so that's a long freaking way. So, I just want to show you Crab Island. And show you where locally we go. Pontoon boats, whatever. Two to three feet deep, a foot in some cases. People just come out and anchor hang out over the years it's gotten really insane out there so they had to put a you see those white buoys that's actually a central corridor where no boats can anchor that's so emergency boats can get in and out and usually there's like 30 businesses out here which kind of f's it all up but that's crab island that's our local claim to fame hey jim couch i know you'll never see this but i hope you enjoyed your time here that's again the East Pass. All right, I'm gonna pause this and get off the wall. Pray for me. All right, so the vlog's ending here. And uh, right before I started shooting Crab Island, I got off my bike, I took everything off. And I looked at my helmet and I was like, what's wrong with this picture? And this was the point at which I realized I had spent so long since I vlogged, I, uh, I never hooked the mic up. So, thus, this being my first ever voiceover vlog. And the irony of that is, I just got a new uh, audio interface for my computer. And I've got a studio mic at home, and it all works. <laughs> so, my voiceover has been courtesy of an SM7 and a Focusrite I, uh, 2i2. And I'm a dumbass, but, you know, what you gonna do? Love you guys. Talk to you soon.